cervical smears are an important screening test used to identify those females who have cellular changes to the cervix as a result of human papillomavirus, or HPV. This is essential, as through screening, these changes can be detected at an earlier, precancerous stage, and thus enable easier and more effective treatment. But before we carry on, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you don't miss out on any of our new content releases. And make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video to find out how you can save 20% of surgical teaching premium. Okay, let's make a start. Smears involve the use of a speculum to help visualization of the cervix, and thus you should be familiar with how to use the speculum. If not, then make sure you check out our video covering the use of specular for the internal inspection of the vagina and the cervix. The equipment we'll need when performing a cervical smear includes Gloves, a speculum, lubricating gel, an endocervical brush, a cytology pot, some gauze or paper tissue, and a good source of light. After washing our hands, we introduce ourselves to the patient, then clarify their identity, check that the patient isn't pregnant, and explain what the test involves and why it's being performed. We should also ask the patient if they have any pain, before then explaining that the test may be a little bit uncomfortable, but will be over fairly quickly. And also explain that they may experience some light bleeding after the test has been completed. Finally, we then obtain the patient's consent. Given the nature of the examination, it's important that we have a chaperone present, and they should also be introduced to the patient. At this point, if the patient hasn't yet emptied their bladder, then we should ask them to do so. For the examination, the patient should be exposed from the waist down. We ask the patient to lie on her back, with her ankles together and her knees spread apart as much as is comfortably possible. We put on our gloves and then start the inspection of the vulva, looking for any obvious abnormalities, including masses, scars, ulcers, discharge, white lesions, and varicosities. Next, we may then warm the speculum under running water, before lubricating it with water-based lubricating gel. Using our left hand, we gently open the labia minora, so that we have a good view of the introitus. Holding the speculum in our right hand, with the blades closed, and the handle pointed towards us, we gently insert it into the vagina, with the speculum angled downwards and backwards to match the angle of the vagina. We then gently rotate the speculum 90 degrees clockwise, so that the handle is positioned anteriorly. When the speculum is unable to be advanced any further, we slowly open the blades of the speculum to expose the cervix and the vaginal walls, before then locking the blades in place by tightening the thumbscrew. After inspecting the cervix, we are now able to obtain the cervical screening sample, or the smear sample. We take the endocervical brush and introduce it through the speculum and into the endocervical canal. With the brush positioned in the canal, we rotate the brush a full 360 degrees, approximately five times in a clockwise direction. This process allows us to sample the cells in the region, which can then be analysed under cytology to look for the signs of HPV-related changes. We can then remove the endocervical brush, taking care not to touch the speculum with a brush as we do so, before depositing the endocervical cell samples into the cytology specimen pot by gently swirling the brush within the fluid, as you can see demonstrated here. We can now remove the speculum by untightening the thumbscrew, but keeping the blades open, and slowly withdraw the instrument to enable us to inspect the vaginal walls as we do so. The speculum is rotated 90 degrees so that the handle now points towards us, and this allows us to visualize the anterior and posterior walls of the vagina. As the blades approach the introitus, we then allow them to close, but taking care not to pinch the pubic hair. Or the labia. 
we inform the patient that the cervical screening sample is now complete. Before thanking them, provide them with a tissue to clean any lubricating gel and ask them to then redress. After disposing our equipment in a clinical waste bin, we label the cytology specimen pot with the correct patient details. And then finally, we need to document our findings or, if in an examination, report them to the examiner. If you found this video helpful, then make sure you subscribe to our channel for more great free content. Or, if you want to make learning for med school and board exams easier, then subscribe to surgicalteaching.com and check out our expert endorsed videos, high yield revision questions, and our supportive online community. Surgical Teaching was designed by doctors to help students learn smarter. And right now, you can enjoy all of our great content for less, with 20% off our annual premium subscriptions when using the code STYouTube20. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you soon.